各位观众，欢迎您收看公共电视为您所制作播出的《美国之棒大联盟的热赛》，我是袁定文。今天要为大家所介绍的是杨基跟红袜四连战，在本周的第二场比赛。那昨天那场比赛呢，是由杨基队啊以大比数十三比五打败了红袜队，拔得了头筹。所以这四连战的第一场比赛是杨基队获胜，也因此使得杨基队超越了红袜队，成为了美国联盟东区的现在排名第一的球队。不过领先波士顿红袜队只不过半场的一个差距。那当然，今天也是啊，台湾的骄傲，王建民在今年球季啊第十四场的出赛，因为前面一场比赛他是担任救援的工作，也是今年球季的第一次担任救援，所以变成了今天这场比赛虽然是第十四次出赛，但却是第十三次的担任先发，又是要碰到波士顿红袜队，也是王建民在今年球季啊第三度遭遇到波士顿红袜队了。但我们知道前两场比赛，王建民的成绩啊并不理想，是零胜一败的一个战绩。但事实上，王建民生涯四度，包括去年有两度啊，遭遇到波士顿红袜队。去年两次是一次先发，一次担任救援，所以这四次担任这个呃投球的工作，面对啊波士顿红袜队三次担任先发，一次担任救援。这四场比赛到现在为止，王建民还没有打败过红袜队，是零胜一败的一个战绩，而且自责分率是非常的高。但是这四场比赛，王建民却从来没有在自己的主场，也就是 Yankee Stadium 啊。来担任先发面对红袜队的工作。那今天是第一度，王建民的生涯当中第一度在自己的主场担任先发来碰上红袜队，希望会造成一个不一样的一个结果。好，我们先来看一下现在现阶段美国联盟东区，也就是这两个球队所属的东区的一个战绩排名的状况。我们来看一下，杨基队刚刚提到了，昨天是以十三比五打败了红袜队，现阶段三十四胜二十二败，领先红袜队有半场差距。这个半场就是洋基队啊，胜场数三十四场，要比红袜队的三十三场多了半场。那蓝鸟队不要忘了，在这一区里面，事实上也是紧跟在后。虽然蓝鸟队昨天输球，但是跟洋基跟红袜的差距并不大，都在三场以内。那精英跟魔鬼鱼在这一区里面是排在后面两名，所以看起来这一区不只是洋基跟红袜竞争，而且事实上要包括蓝鸟队变成了一个三强啊鼎立的一个状态，尤其是今年球季啊。红袜队打蓝鸟队打得非常的差，打了三个三连战呢、啊，红袜队都是一胜两败啊，落后给蓝鸟队，所以可见呢，红袜队碰到蓝鸟队啊，几乎可以说是一个天敌的状态。那接着我们来看一下王建民啊，今年球季的一个战绩。那王建民今年他在对这个精英队的。他在前两场比赛啊，是分别碰上了老虎队，是做先发，但投的并不理想，投了四局就被打了八支安打，失掉了五分的自责分，是今年球季啊单场比赛先发投球局数可以说是最少的一次。那前一场他的上场呢是对啊精英队担任救援，在第九局，呃领先一分的情况下，结果他面对了四个人次，呃解决了中间两个，造成了那个球那场比赛最后的两个出局者，啊虽然被打了两支。安打两支都是一连打，没有掉分，所以那场比赛他拿下了他职棒生涯的第一场的救援成功，也保住了这个洋基队在那场比赛的一个胜利。所以整体的战绩来说，王建民现阶段是五胜两败，一次救援成功，投了七十四又三分之二局，被打了八十一支安打，安打被打的稍微多了一点。那另外有三发是全力打，二十七个保送，二十呃二十七个三振，二十一个保送，保送也稍微啊呃多了一点，因为三振的次数并不。并不多，那自责分率是 4.82， 比他这个之前做先发的 4.86 的自责分率是稍微下降了一点。那我们再来看一下王建民啊，他对左打跟对右打的一个打击率，对左打当然打击率还是稍微高了一点，三成对两成六二，被上垒率也是对左打者上垒率稍微高，三成七八对两成八七。那长打率啊是慢慢接近了，对左打者的长打率三成七五，对右打者的。这个长打率是三成三一，都在逐渐的呃接近当中，所以可见的王建民这个对左打跟对右打的这种情况，跟去年差不多，都是先一开始球季刚开始的时候被躲打者打的是比较惨，然后慢慢慢慢的经过调试之后呢，那就慢慢接近对右打者的一个打击率了。那被打击率啊，整体来说，他的被打击率是两成七七啊，还是稍微啊偏高了一点。那我们知道啊，杨基队。在前一场比赛，呃，也就是王建民对精英队那场比赛是担任救援的工作，我们也特别调出了那场比赛的一个画面啊，让大家看一下。因为那场比赛公共电视并没有为大家做这个直播的一个服务，没想到他会上场担任救援的工作，所以我们现在就来看一下那场比赛的这个王建民在对精英队在第九局的时候上场啊
担任这个。救援的工作，那场比赛他在一出局的情况下，六比五领先。上来面对先是 Melvin Mora，Mora 是曾经来过台湾打球，是当时是三商虎队的一名选手。他是让 Mora 打出了右边方的滚地球，让 Kenno 和传一磊刺杀，当时形成两人出局。那洋基队只差一个出局者就可以取得那场比赛胜利，但在两人出局之后，那王建民是遭遇到了一些麻烦。接连被打两支安打之后，让这个阿维洛佩斯击出了右边方向的高飞球，被右外手接杀出局。这就是王建民在那场比赛面对四个人次，解决了两名啊重要的一个打击者，造成了这两个关键的出局，拿到了他生涯的第一次的救援成功，就是那场啊对精英队。王建民上场担任救援的一些画面，也使得 Joe Torrey 虽然在救援投手不足的情况下，而且 m a r i n o Rivera 没办法上阵，临时把王建民派上场担任救援的工作，结果救援成功。我们知道那天原本应该是王建民在休息一天以后，在 b o l p e n 要练投的一个时间，但老经验的 Joe Torrey 啊，在赛前就感觉到，也许那场比赛需要王建民上场担任救援的工作，因为他的救援投手不是这个受伤的受伤，就是疲惫的疲惫。可能没有办法支撑到全场，所以就叫王建民在赛前先不要去哦做投球练习，把这个体能哦保留住，到了正式比赛看看有没有需要。就那样的一个举动，真的因此啊得到了回馈，所以到了最后派上王建民哦，就那场比赛王建民不但是拿到了救援成功，而且投出了今年球季大概是球速最快的，因为那场比赛他的快速球都飙到了九十六、九十七英里，可以说是状况非常的好，因此、啊。顺利的拿下了一个救援成功，我们也恭喜王建民。现在不但是在胜败的这个呃那个项目上有了数字，现在连救援成功啊都有了一个数字了。好，这场红袜跟洋基队啊四连战第二场比赛在洋基球场、啊、马上即将展开。洋基队是希望报这个借着第一场比赛大胜的这个气势啊，能够趁胜追击。那波士顿红袜队是极力想在这场比赛里面扳回来一城。我们现在就到洋基球场来看这场比赛。It's all about the beer. Coco Crisp in center field will lead off. Mark Loretta, the second baseman, bat second. David Ortiz shut down by the Yankees last night. He'll DH at third. Also shut down the cleanup hitter, left fielder Manny Ramirez. But he has very, very strong numbers against Wong. Trot Nixon's in right. Jason Baratek will catch. Batting seventh, former Yankee farmhand Mike Lowell at third. Kevin Euclid at first, and at the bottom of the order, the shortstop Alex Cora. Chen Ming Wang. The last time he lost a game was to these uh, Boston Red Sox. Check out his record in 13 games, five and two record, more than a hit per inning. And you can see he's not really a power pitcher. Not a lot of strikeouts, and uh, probably like to cut down on that walk total a little. Get down tonight. And that was one of your favorite songs, I think, Bobby. Get down tonight. That's what Wang has to do to be successful. And be economical, which he has. Not a lot of uh, pitches per inning. He does have trouble with men on, and that's a. Look at the Hyundai Pitcher Scouting Report. Take the Hyundai Challenge. Visit the HyundaiChallenge.com. So Coco Crisp steps in, tries to bunt and fouls it back, and we're at 0-1. You see the numbers on Crisp. Missed the first month and a half of the season with a broken finger. So this is his first Yankee Red Sox experience this series. One one count. Yankees and the Red Sox have split eight games so far this year. Two and two at Fenway. Two and two here at the stadium. Grounded foul. Now the Yankees and the Red Sox will not meet again until August. So Major League Baseball, in putting together the schedule, had four of their six series all done before the first week of June was up. And then they have that five-game set in August at Fenway, and then they have a three-game set here at Yankee Stadium toward the end of September. Man, the two-one chop toward second. Robinson Cano. All right.
Let's take a look at the Yankees defensively behind Chin Ming Wong, and the infield will get a lot of work if he's right. First, we'll take a look at the outfield. Cabrera, Damon, and Williams, that's left to right. The infield, third base to first. A-Rod, Cairo, Cano, and Phillips. Behind the plate is Posada, and Wong's on the mound. The Yankees have made nine errors in eight games against the Red Sox this season. And the Yankee defense, uh, very important for Jim and Wong, as you were talking about, especially on the left side of the infield. A-Rod and tonight Cairo, but Cairo very capable of playing short. And there's a strike to Mark Loretta. You knew it was a weird night for the Red Sox last night when Loretta struck out twice in three innings since he's the hardest man the fan in the American League. Having a good first season with the Red Sox and a little bit of a slide right now though one for his last 13. Foul back. New York Yankees baseball is broadcast in Spanish. It's available by hitting the SAP button on your television. SAP is brought to you by the all-new 2007 Toyota Camry. You see Derek Jeter missing his second straight game with that injured right thumb. Now Joe Torre has several reasons why he wants Jeter to play. One, Jeter's a great player. The second is Joe Torre said that Jeter is an annoyance on the bench. <laughs> He's wearing him out down there. <laughs> the 0-2. Outside. You know, you get these starters uh, who play on an everyday basis, and then uh, all of a sudden they have to set out a couple of games, and they're all over that dugout. They don't know what to do with themselves. This is Joe uh, quote. It's not a lot of fun because he puts himself next to me and drives me nuts. <laughs> Pitches outside the count two and two. Well, at least at the start, he's giving Joe a bit of a respite because he's up on the top step, and Joe is in his normal seat. Toward the home plate side of the dugout. And the 2 2. There's a humpback line drive that drops in the left field for basic for Loretta. Let's take a look at the umpire and crew tonight. You've got Bill Welke behind the plate. The veteran crew chief, Tim McClelland, is at first. Marty Foster at second and Fielden Culbreth over at third. Talking about that uh, little bit of a slide that uh, Loretta was in. Uh, he's the type of hitter that won't slide very much for very long because he hits in a great position with Ortiz hitting behind him and he's a guy that doesn't strike out that much. That much he puts the ball in play uses the entire field. Those are your high average type hitters. David. And a little bit of a slide himself. Three for his last 21. His average at 257. And the pitch outside, 1 0. And this is a little tougher matchup for Chen Ming Wong than it was for uh, Mike Messina last night. The uh, first three seasons against the. Uh, not the first three seasons, yeah. What first three hit? games. First three games. Okay. This, I got you. But anyway, he's a low ball pitcher and. Ortiz a low ball hitter. To back that up Ortiz is five for nine versus uh, Wong in his career. So the logical question is and Roger Maris was a great low ball hitter. You go over a meeting and say well how you, if you're a low ball pitcher and a low ball hitter how do you pitch it? You pitch him lower than low. Yeah, right. <laughs> you try to get him between the shins and the shoe tops and get him to hit it on the ground. One one. Check swing, ground ball, third baseline, and it just missed hitting the bag. Foul ball. Now the Yankees can't really shift totally with a runner on first base, so A-Rod is closer than he normally would be, but that ball just missed the bag. Better chance for Ortiz to get a base hit uh, with a man on because they can't shift, you know, like they did last night when they took the uh, hit away from him, but a uh, good play that Cano made it. A shallow right field, I guess it was. Terry Francona said that the shift has taken away about 10 hits from Ortiz so far this year. No, they're not looking for average from, uh, from Ortiz. They're looking for RBIs and home runs. 16 homers, 50 ribbies so far for David Ortiz. And he strikes out. Two away. Well, how about that? Struck out in the first inning last night. How'd he do it? Just missed with that one. Good movement, and he's got a rather explosive fastball tonight. 
And there's an indication of it. I mean, there's a low ball hitter, and the pitch really, when David Ortiz is swinging well, that is right where he likes the ball. That tells you that Chen Ming Wong has a lot of late movement on his fastball tonight. Although I, that didn't register as the 90 mile an hour fastball. That might have been some kind of a, uh, a sinker or a, not quite as uh, as hard as the fastball. More movement on it. Swings and misses. That's that same pitch. Yeah, you get these guys, uh, both these guys swinging and missing at these uh, pitches. You know, you've got some sink and some movement. Let's see what that was to Ramirez. Yeah, that. You know, almost like a. Almost acts like a changeup. Yeah, they're out in front. Well, his fastball is about 93 94. That pitch is 85 86. Yeah, the beans change. I'd like to have it for a fastball. Also what we're seeing now is, is Wong is working out of a stretch and the opposing team hits 175 points higher with runners in scoring position against Wong. Their average with a man on base is 380 with the bases empty the opponents average 205. Might get a little indication of uh, as you see those numbers of why that is by looking at his motion from here. Even though Ramirez fouled that pitch off, it was up. When Chin Meng Wang is in the windup, he takes that exaggerated windup and he really gets loaded up. And I think from the set position, it's a little tougher for him to do that. He gets a little bit out in front. As a result, the ball is a little bit higher. Two. Count levels at two and two. Just underway here at Yankee Stadium. Game two of this four game set. Yankees won last night 13 to 5. Mike Messina got the win, his eighth of the year. See Trot Nixon on deck. Bill Welke. <laughs> Jin Ming Wong with a little bit of a, a step toward the Yankee dugout. Maybe it did just miss the outside corner. Okay. Well, that'll release Loretta at first, a 3 2 count and two outs. And it's a ball. Yeah, he almost did that a couple pitches ago. Started into his motion. Sometimes when you, as a pitcher, you look down at the catcher and you're anticipating what the sign's going to be, and, and then you don't see the sign. Up, oh, see right there. He he flinched that right arm. I think he thought, well, I got the right sign, and then uh, Posada changed it. And he didn't wait till the sequence was over. He moved his arm right there, and Welke caught it. So that puts a runner in scoring position now. For a great RBI guy. Three two. Check swing. Did he go? No, said Tim McClellan. So a walk to Ramirez. Awfully good discipline by Manny on those two. I mean, those are very close pitches. And he's just able to hold up at the last minute. That one was clearly in the dirt but Posada thought maybe he would have offered at it and he held up in time. McClellan uh, giving the uh, no swing sign down at first base and uh, one thing that uh, even though he walked uh, Manny Ramirez uh, in that sequence of pitches most of the pitches well all the pitches that he messed with were down in the zone. And a strike to Nixon. Nixon has had a excuse me Michael he's had a field day with right handed pitching this year he comes into this game batting 344 versus right handed pitchers. 
And Terry Francona has uh, over the past taking him out takes him out of the lineup when there's left hander tough one out there. Was what Bobby's talking about 190 against lefties. Yesterday Nixon was two for two with two walks and three runs scored. So one of the few Red Sox with a good night. Leo two. Soft ground ball to second base. Tried to pull an outside pitch and that'll do it as Wong works out of trouble. No run to hit. One ball. No errors. Two runners left. Red Sox nothing. The Yankees coming to bat. David Pauley making his second big league start and his first here at Yankee Stadium. And this is the New York Yankees starting lineup that he is going to face. It's presented by America Runs on Duncan. Johnny Damon, the center fielder, will lead off. Batting second and playing left field. Melky Cabrera, Jason Giambi with a big home run last night off the facing of the right field upper deck. He'll DH. He'll hit third. Cleaning up, third baseman Alex Rodriguez. Jorge Posada will catch up that fifth. Batting sixth and playing second base is Robinson Cano. Andy Phillips carries a seven game inning streak into the game during which time he's hitting 467 three homers and 11 ribbies he plays first Bernie Williams and right and Miguel Cairo is the shortstop. And they'll face about to be 23 year old David Pauley. Let's take a look at the Hyundai pitcher scouting report. Take the Hyundai Challenge. Visit the Hyundai Challenge .com. A fill in role. He hopes he can change that with a good performance with David Wells still out. This will be his second start. When you hear him talk about young pitchers they'll say he got electric stuff. Not the case with Pauley. Not a hard thrower. Sinker slider change up and will the stadium lights excite him a little bit here at Yankee Stadium. His first time here second big league start it bothered him a bit in Toronto so it certainly isn't going to be any easier tonight. One thing you have to like about Paulie he didn't hide the fact that hey this is a big deal pitching at Yankee Stadium in fact before yesterday's game he went out to Monument Park and was snapping pictures. There's a strike to Johnny Damon he said it's every kid's dream to pitch at Yankee Stadium. I think anybody who's ever played baseball as a kid has always wanted to play or pitch in Yankee Stadium. I'm getting that chance. It's definitely a childhood dream come true. What a beautiful bunt by Damon. Base hit. It's called perfect. That was a perfect bunt base hit for Johnny Damon. Lowell just a little bit uh, back at third base, but it wouldn't have made any difference if Lowell had been playing even with the bag. This is going to be an absolutely perfect bunt for Johnny Damon. No play by the catcher, no play by the third baseman. Only a base hit, and the first man on for the Yankees. Yeah, you could thank the new Yankee Stadium uh, turf, the new field over the last few years for that because. Remember the old field that was sloped off for drainage purposes that ball might have trickled foul perfectly level now in the infield. Malky Cabrera takes a pitch outside plus the uh, you know the, the grass juts up right against the uh, foul line too. So you can use the grass a lot uh, more to stop the baseball which that one did. Not a whole lot of dirt there There used to be a lot of dirt between the inside of the infield outside the infield. That teams in the past, the 1959 White Sox called them the Go Go Sox with Aparicio and Fox and the Speed guys. They they would actually doctor up the baseline and slant it back toward fair territory to keep those bunts fair. You don't have to do that right here. If you get it on the grass, chances are it's not going to go foul. Cabrera carries an eight-game hitting streak into this contest. A lot of home teams, you know, will. Uh, We'll kind of put the field in shape based on the kind of ball club that you have. If you've got a lot of guys that hit the ball on the ground, 
uh, are a lot of sinker ball pitchers. Uh, they let the grass grow on the infield to kind of stop the ball from getting through the infielders. Soft ground ball is short. Let's see if it's hard enough to get two. It is. Six six three double play. That's big relief for David Paul. I mentioned he's not a hard thrower, but he's got a good changeup, and that's what that was. And a quick decision here by Cora. Not enough time to flip it to Loretta, so a little stutter step makes the play by himself and gets Cabrera by a stride. Well, Cora has a lot of incentive to make plays behind Paulie because before the game, Terry Francona said, our bullpen is just sapped right now. And if David Pauly doesn't give us innings, we actually might have to pitch Alex Cora. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, now they they did make a move just before the game. I haven't heard an official announcement. Supposedly they called up their young phenom Craig Hansen. Grounded to first. Euclidus is there, and he will take it and beat Giambi to the bag. So Pauly gets through his first inning at the stadium. No runs to hit. The double play. Nobody left. At the end of one, no score. New York, are you ready for the 2006 National Puerto Rican Day Parade? Check out all the hot stars, the best Latin beats, and this year it's all led by Grand Marshal Mark Anthony. It's a huge celebration. See it live this Sunday on Fox 5 at 11 a.m., then continuing on My 9 at 1.30. Here's Jason Varitek against Chen Ming Wang. Way high. Talking to uh, Ron Guidry before today's ball game, Gator was saying that uh, a lot of times uh, Wong does not finish off his uh, pitches. And uh, Kenny, you know more about that than I do. And that he said that uh, a lot of times he gets in the habit of, uh, of throwing his pitches like you you would at a dart board. You know, like you're throwing a dart and doesn't, he doesn't finish the pitch off. And that's uh, one of the reasons that he leaves the ball high in the strike zone. Foul back. Yeah, you can you can tell tonight he's making a conscious effort. And what Gator's talking about by finishing your pitches is his right leg is passing his left on the foul through the home plate. The pitching coaches will say, don't throw the ball to the catcher, throw it through the catcher. And the tendency is to let it go and kind of recoil and not finish it off. And like you said, then it'll come in a little higher than you want it to. Chop slowly toward first, Andy Phillips. Hello. Now watch the uh, follow through here. See he's coming right down toward the hitter. Right leg passes the left and he's in position to get over to first base if he's needed. Andy Phillips with some nifty footwork there can make the grab and the play unassisted. One thing about Wong no matter whether it's good or whether it's bad he's basically got the same personality the same look he doesn't uh, really react to uh, good or bad. He's the same level all the time. Strike to Mike Lowell. Tonight's closed captioning is brought to you by your New York, New Jersey and Connecticut Lexus dealer. Long actually closed the game in Baltimore when both Mariano Rivera and Kyle Farnsworth were not available. It was his throw day and uh, our Kim Jones was joking with him after the game. She said, are you going to take over for Molly? He says, no, no, no. I, I don't have that heart. Yeah. <laughs> good old-fashioned baseball. Come in on your throw day. Boy, he's got a good fastball tonight. I mean, exceptional in the uh, mid-90s. And there's an indication of it. You, you can always read when you look at hitters. Uh, you can read what kind of fastball guys got. And that's what pitchers ought to do from the sideline. I mean, guys late like that on the fastball. There's the two thirds of an innings pick up the save that Michael referred to. Ground ball left side, backhanded by Cairo, but no throw. They'll give Lowell a base hit. Well, Mike Lowell, uh, he is having some kind of year offensively for the Boston Red Sox. Batting 346 versus right-handed pitchers. He's going to pick up another uh, base hit. This will be an infield hit. 
here in the second inning. 327 he comes in uh, this game on the year with his average. So all of those uh, two numbers are going to go up. There's Euclid. A lot of people in baseball thought that the Red Sox were taking a good gamble with Lowell because if you talk to scouts they say that Lowell makes his living from left center to the left field foul pole and last year his swing was a little bit slow and the fly balls that would have gone out to left were fly ball outs to center field and they felt that if his back could speed up just a bit Fenway Park would be the perfect place for him now. Mike has come out and said well I don't know if it helps me that much he said I think it's actually taking two home runs away from me. But yeah, uh, he's, he's had lead, a good year. He's leading the league in doubles. Yeah. That's Fenway Park. You, you hit those balls up on the monster that go out a lot of parks. They're doubles at Fenway. Left field 44 hits for Lowell. Seven to center and 11 to right. There's a strike. That was always the word for years when you pit, when you faced the Red Sox when they got out on the road. You know they were so conscious of pulling the ball in Fenway Park. They were hit. You get them to pull the ball on the road, especially here in Yankee Stadium. Most of the time they're just lazy flies. Ask Rico Petroselli about that. Yeah. <laughs> Rico. Yeah, you pitch Back him middle in. He would send you home barefoot. Boy, no kidding. There's a strike. All those Fenway numbers are exceptional for the offensive uh, side of the uh, Boston Red Sox and even left handed hitters you know that they uh, have in their minor league system. They teach them about hitting the ball the opposite way. Yeah, all you have to do is check the record book and see all the left hand batting champions they've had. I mean, some have been multiple, you know, batting champions, starting with Williams and Pete Runnels and Yaz, Boggs, Freddie Lynn. Big advantage for a left hand hitter. You don't have to try to pull the ball. You probably want a batting title play in there. Well, I don't know about that. With I mean, Yankee speed, Stadium never. wasn't too bad either, you know. My style of hitting probably would have been a lot different. Broken back. Watch out. Watch Popped out. up to right. And it drops in front of Bernie Williams. Ooh, Bernie reacted a little late there. If he I don't think he realized that he had a shot at Lowell at second base. Yeah, Lowell had frozen. But right there. Hey, Bernie realizes right there he's not going to catch it, but see, he's looking at first and then reacts a little bit late. Lowell had uh, hung up, and if he got himself in position, I think he'd have got the force on Lowell easily at second base. So first and second with one out and here's Alex Cora so Euclid picks up a gift base hit there. <laughs> and there's a strike. Thinker ball pitcher could get out of a lot of jams because of the many balls that are hit on the ground so they pick up a lot of two outs with one pitch count on two this game has a lot different feel than yesterday's when the Yankees actually scored 13 runs in the first three innings and according to the Elias Sports Bureau Never before in the history of this matchup, the Yankees and the Red Sox, has either team scored 13 runs over the first three innings. That dates back to 1903. Popped up. Posada. Two outs. Good changeup. Show those hitters you got a mid 90 fastball, and they're uh, they want to sit back and make sure you don't throw that past him, and uh, just makes your changeup more effective. He had Cora way out in front. 
Here's Coco Crisp. He's three for 15 with runners in scoring position this year. Grounded out to second in the first. Coco tried to entertain the media before yesterday's game. He was asked to compare his game with Johnny Damon's. He said, there's no comparison. He said, my game has to be compared with David Ortiz and Manny Ramirez. I'm looking <laughs> for 40, 50 home runs. Not he's what Johnny Damon it. did. Yeah. He's taking some yeah. big acts for a leadoff guy. Ties him up to count one and one. He's had trouble swinging at that pitch that's kind of low at its side, especially the breaking ball. Uh, last night he swung over uh, two or three of those. The guy that uh, tries to keep those hands as uh, loose as he can. A lot of movement on the bat. Keep the tension out of the, the hands of the forearms, the fingers. I got a piece of crisp. Sada sitting a little uh, outside. That ball was inside with a little movement. You can see the crisp fouling it on his uh, foot. He's uh, had a broken finger already this year and has set out already almost the entire part of the first. Uh, well, what did you say? 30, 40, 50 games? 30 yeah, about games? a month and a half, yeah. yeah. 42 pitches for Wong already, with just in the second inning, 27 strikes. Foul back. Yeah, and he's one of the more economical pitchers in the American League. This normally is about a at least a, a three inning total for him. Well he averages 14.1 pitches per inning which would give him 28 at this point but he's at 43 only Roy Halladay and Jeremy Bonderman throw fewer pitchers per inning. And he's going to throw at least another. You look at this jam and he certainly has not been slapped around an infield single by Lowell and a pop up by Euclid to right that should have been that should have been caught. David Pauly smiling certainly doesn't seem as if uh, Yankee Stadium is affecting him adversely at this point. Outside. Worked to scoreless first, first inning against the Reds. Lowell at second, Euclid is at first. This will be the seventh pitch of the at bat. And now it'll be eight. Yeah, good at bat by Coco Crisp. He's able to fight off some uh, pretty tough pitches just to keep himself alive. And on a 2 2 pitch uh, that's coming up, as long as you can. Uh, Keep yourself alive on some pitches that you know you can't drive. Uh, more chances than not, the more pitches that Wong throws, he's going to get a pretty good pitch to hit. Rip foul. Wow. I think it hit somebody yeah. in the stands. Someone with their back turned. Now Posada will go out and talk with Wong. Well they always say the more pitches a batter sees the better chance a pitcher has of making a mistake. Well the reason for that is is that uh, the, the batter gets a chance to really lock in on the velocity and the movement during that particular at bat. 
But also on the other hand a, a hitter gets to be a little bit uh, anxious when he sees a lot of pitches too because uh, he feels like he's on most of the uh, pitches that he's seeing. Pop them up. They'd like the change. And Cairo puts it away as Wong works in and out of trouble. No runs, two hits, and two men left. Coming up for the Yankees in the bottom of the second, Alex Rodriguez. Certainly not loved in Boston, but here in New York, he's catching on. The reigning American League MVP will lead off against David Pauley next. Full house here at Yankee Stadium as we go to the bottom of the second inning on my nine. It'll be the middle third of the Yankee order, Alex Rodriguez. Jorge Posada and Robinson Cano. Ideal matchup for uh, Alex, a guy who doesn't have a power fastball upstairs, keeps it down. And Alex likes the ball down. And there's a strike. Pitches inside. Alex says, and Jason Giambi agrees, they're both still not 100% after the stomach virus that knocked them for a loop this weekend. They were both not able to keep food down, so they feel kind of weak. Building back up, though. Yeah, I was talking to A-Rod today before the game, and uh, I said, do you think you picked that up from... Uh, from Wade he said absolutely <laughs> so he blamed it on him Dwayne Wade from the Miami Heat that they were in uh, Detroit same mm -hmm. time the Yankees were playing the Pistons they had had lunch together you shouldn't be sharing a Cobb salad that's all there is to it <laughs> two two swung on a miss then Rodriguez down on strikes. they could only afford one you know <laughs> Hey, tonight's stock ticker is brought to you by TD Bank Financial Group. Boy, a little better fastball than I think we anticipated from David Pauley. That, that was in the 90s and uh, got it past A-Rod. Maybe he's a little amped up here pitching in uh, Yankee Stadium and it's working to his advantage. Here's Posada. Red Sox got Pauly in the deal that sent Dave Roberts to the Padres and Yankee fans will forever remember Dave Roberts for what he did in the 2004 playoffs pinch running stealing a bag and starting that unforgettable comeback by the Red Sox. And that's the first time the Red Sox had ever really had a player like that a guy you could take off the bench and just have him take off. Well that's the change up and uh, talking to the Red Sox personnel they were saying that uh, his best pitch his out pitch would be his change up. But, uh, like Kitty was saying he got a pretty good fastball sinker tonight. Change up again. And Posada walks four pitches. Al Nipper pitching coach. For the Red Sox. Al is not shaved for this series. A little bit of the Lupinello look. Here's Robinson Cano. Another base hit for Cano. Robinson is now 11 for his last 23. It's like Cano, every time he goes up there, especially a guy that he knows that sinks the ball, uh, looking to hit the ball the other way, and when you do that, you get a pitch like that, and you automatically just turn on it and use your quickness on the inside part to just line it in the right field for a base hit. Boy, it's, uh, he's on every pitch now, it looks like. 
And so is the guy at the plate, Andy Phillips. Phillips carries a seven game hitting streak into this game. Top foul. Well, last night in the second inning, it was Andy Phillips uh, who got the Yankees started with that three run home run, his fourth of the year. They ended up with seven runs in that inning. He got a curtain call, well deserved. Andy Phillips hitting 333 with runners in scoring position. 298 overall. Now Andy's a rookie but he has been waiting for this chance for a long time. He's an older rookie. He's 29. <laughs> Finally getting the opportunity to play every day and Don Mattingly said you could see it in his face how he believes in himself more. Well he's also made some adjustments in Don Mattingly and uh, Phillips. Phillips had a little bit of a problem uh, Mattingly was saying uh, with the with the good stuff inside and he wasn't able to really get the quickness and the short uh, stroke of the bat head out there and so that's what they have worked on. Like the change up way out in front he popped it up to right. Two away. You know Bobby that that's a message we hear more and more talking to Ron Jackson the hitting coach for the Red Sox uh, and going back even to Terry Crowley when he worked with Shane Mack. Bernie of course always gets an appreciative hand here from the crowd but a lot of a lot of hitters you'd think when they came up as young hitters would be pull hitters. Now there's a lot of hitters that have to be taught how to pull the ball because they're so used to yeah. going the other way. And Mattingly was one of those guys that when he came to Yankee Stadium he had to learn how to utilize uh, the right field porch and Lou Pinella. Uh, worked with him and made him a home run hitter. He was not a home run hitter when he first came to the Yankees. Pitch to Bernie Williams is a strike. Donnie was telling me that, that he had seen Andy Phillips in the minor leagues uh, uh, several times and uh, the one thing that he liked about Phillips that even when he made an out you know he just had that swagger you know that that hitters have and and it was just something that uh, Mattingly noticed that he liked about Andy Phillips. You know, I, not that you held your head down, but uh, you would just then, mm -hmm, and, you know, just kind of bob your head up and down like, uh, okay, well, he got me this time. I'll get him the next time. Boy, is Mattingly a proud papa today? Yeah. His son Preston, his middle son, was drafted with the 31st pick of the draft. That's considered the supplemental round but it's considered the first round he was drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers and a couple of weeks ago people were projecting him as a third or fourth round pick so now he is a first round pick popped up foul and he's got some options this kid he can he can play short but he he's six three they say he projects to the outfield or the corners in the infield that um, he has a scholarship that he's already signed to go to Tennessee so he can use that as negotiating leverage if in fact he wants to play in the big leagues right away but Donnie was uh, was beaming before the game very much so and uh, rightfully so that's got to be a, uh, one of the proudest moments in a dad's life to know that uh, your kid may follow in the same footsteps that uh, that you have done for so many years. There was some nervousness though in the Mattingly household because I've been told by a number of scouts and I'm sure he had heard it as well that the Red Sox were very very interested in Preston and that. That would have made Thanksgiving dinner a little awkward. Now, now look, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm all for Preston Mattingly, but uh, I still can't get over the Dodgers beating the Yankees in 81 in the World Series, so I can't go that far. Numbers go. 3-2 is grounded to second. Loretta. And uh, that'll do it. So Paulie pitches in and out of trouble. No runs a hit and two men left. We play two here at the stadium. No score as we head to the third. Well Melky Cabrera's done a nice job filling in for Hideki Matsui who might be out for the season but Matsui at the ballpark early while no one was taking BP at this point just a very boring exercise of picking up the ball and throwing it just to keep his arm in shape. He obviously can't put a glove on the broken left wrist and then after um, after the workout he was interviewed by the Japanese media. 
And you can see he misses it, but he is getting by. He said he, he still holds out hope that he will be back before the end of the season. No scores will go to the top of the third. Mark Loretta leads off against Chin Ming Wong. I asked, I asked him if he was bored, and he said, you know what? No. He says, I, I'm reading a lot. I'm going to movies. He goes, and I watch the Yankee games every night. He said, as a matter of fact, I never knew you talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> that one's driven to left field. Cabrera's there. One away. Yeah, I asked him the other day. In fact, uh, uh, yesterday he was in the outfield throwing like a miniature football instead of a baseball. You know, trying mm -hmm. to keep that stretching, uh, that right arm out. And I was asking him if he saw any of the games. He said, "Yeah, I watch every game." He said, "I, I just wait for you guys to say something funny." <laughs> <laughs> you got a long way. <laughs> We're not as funny as we think we are up here. Here's David Ortiz. You know, you talk to guys that are used to playing every day, and all of a sudden they they suffer their first long-term injury. And the one thing they say, there's just a very weird disconnect. You know, you're part of a family when you're on the team, and all of a sudden you're really not. You still are, but, you know, they... How was it deep to right field? No chance. See ya. Into the upper deck by David Ortiz, and it is 1-0 Red Sox. That did not take too long to get out. That was a, a high changeup that became a mediocre fastball. Watch Posada's glove. He was uh, he wanted it down below the knees. It came up a little higher and inside, and right on the tee. Here's Manny Ramirez. He walked in the first. I didn't notice if Bernie gave that a courtesy. Look, you know from playing the outfield, just to make the pitcher feel good on one like that, well, you'll take a couple steps, even though, even though you know, some outfielders, they don't even turn around and look. They you just know by the sound that one's gone. I think Bernie actually had to turn around uh, and face it because it was going to come off the facade so hard it could have come back and hit him in the head. I give him up like that. I always say to him, come on, give me a courtesy look. Yeah, <laughs> a step or two toward the right field wall just to make it look like it might stay in the ballpark. There's a strike count on two. It's amazing between David Ortiz and Manny Ramirez against the Yankees lifetime. They now have 64 home runs between them. He's still behind Jim Tomei, David Ortiz, tied with Troy Gloss and Jason Giambi, Nick Swisher, and Jermaine Dye all have 16. Take a look at David Ortiz and let, let's watch the front foot see where it goes and then where it ends up. And you see how his hips opened up there's talking to Ron Jackson yesterday I said why, why did David Ortiz Ron Papa Jackson our hitting coach he said you know for a long time he would step in with that foot and he would stay there and he'd get locked up pitchers could jam him. So what they worked on is he, he steps in to start with but then he plants that foot back in a square position he could pop the hips open and pull the ball with more authority. Well, he uh, he became the hitter that he is today when he finally learned how to do that you know and, uh, and handle that inside pitch. I mean like you were saying we were talking about David Ortiz. Uh, I don't know that he's ever missed a low inside fastball. 56 pitches for Wong. And we're here in the third. One two. Two and two. I never found the left hand hitter that did miss a pitch low and in. I mean that's just like putting it on a high tee for him. David Pauly has himself a one nothing lead because of that home run. Along with Jim Cott and Bobby Mercer. I'm Michael Kay. You're watching Yankees baseball here on my nine. We thank you for joining us on this Tuesday evening. The Red Sox lead one nothing in the top of the third. 
past a lunging Phillips and into right field. That was a bullet by Ramirez as Bernie gets the ball in. Posada setting up outside. This pitch ends up inside, and uh, nobody better than Ramirez to be able to inside out that ball the opposite way. Uh, he loves the ball out over the plate and away from him, and a great uh, breaking ball hitter, but Wong trying to sink it inside. It didn't sink that much, and it went into right field, and he got out there in a hurry. Here's Trot Nixon. The one thing the Yankees have worried about with Wong is that when he gets into trouble, he gives up big innings. He is not a guy who will give up a run here or run there. He'll give up multiple runs. Over his last 23 innings as a starter coming into this game, Wong has not allowed a single run in any inning. But he has had seven innings over that span in which he has allowed multiple runs. So when he gets into trouble, he really gets into trouble. And that comes back to the difficulty that he has working out of the stretch. Now the count 3 0. Well, the out-of-town scoreboard is brought to you by your Tri-State Lincoln Mercury dealer. See, they green light Nixon. Right down the middle, strike one. I think with the... Uh with the short right field here at Yankee Stadium uh, the way that Nixon has hit right handed pitches this year uh, I would be surprised if he didn't have the green light three and oh but a lot of guys don't like like to hit three and oh they just don't like uh, the pressure of, of failing in that situation and slice well, the other yeah, way yeah excuse me Michael one of the reasons for that is because they figure that uh, they're going to get the same pitch three and one as three and oh and they feel more comfortable swinging at the three one pitch. on the bag for the double play quick reaction by Andy Phillips went up the ladder to get it Rob Nixon of an extra base hit and turned it into a double play but Andy Phillips arm was not this quick couldn't get up there a home run by David Ortiz dropped by a fan in the first row of the upper deck one nothing Red Sox. Yankees baseball on my nine is brought to you in part by the all-new 2007 Toyota Camry. Jeep, makers of the all-new 2006 Jeep Commander. And by your New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut Lexus dealer. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Miguel Cairo will lead off against David Pauly, and Pauly starts him off with a strike. one nothing Red Sox. 1-5-0 on the Ortiz home run. And the Yankees 0-2-0. Singles by Damon and Cano. There's a breaking ball strike. Cano and two. Well, I tell you, David Pauly uh, certainly is pitching above the scouting report we heard from his outing in Toronto where he was nervous, didn't have good control of his curveball. I mean, he's seizing an opportunity right here so far. Driven deep to left. Fair ball. It's gone. It's a foul ball. And I think the thing, even though you know it's a long strike by uh, by Miggy, almost a home run. I think the one thing the Red Sox are pleased with is that he's not throwing a lot of pitches. And you pointed out earlier how Terry Francona said he, they need some innings out of this starter. They can't keep going to that bullpen. This will be his 30th pitch of the game, and the 0-2. Grounded left side through for a base hit. Throw leadoff single for Cairo. 
Also the second time around now coming up for the Yankee hitters. So everybody's had a chance to see uh, Paulie at least one time. That's that little breaking ball. And with two strikes on you, you've got to be a little bit more aggressive. So Cairo finds that hole between uh, short and third. And the Yankees have their leadoff batter on. Yeah, that's his worst pitch. He threw a, a good one earlier in the count, but that one just kind of It's got like a show me pitch. Yeah. yeah. There's Johnny David. Perfect bunt down the third baseline in the first to reach. Jumps on the first pitch, slams down his bat, and hits a pop-up to his successor, Coco Crisp, one away. Like he was trying to slap that to left field and got under it. Yeah, I think he just got a little bit too anxious. Uh, it was a good pitch for Damon to swing at, especially on the first pitch. High and uh, outside a little bit. Here's Melky Cabrera. Wrapped into a double play in the first inning, 6-6-3. Six, six, you'd have to be down on the field to really appreciate how quick your reflexes have to be, to, to understand how fast, how hard that ball is hit, how quick it gets there. He had to actually reach behind him. Took a double away from Nixon. This is how fast it gets there, right here. That's how quick you can get two, too. Yeah. <laughs> As a young lady, uh, I think from the Bergen Record, talking to me today before the game about Moe's Cutter doing a story on Mo and how he's been so effective for so long with that one pitch. And she raised an interesting question. I never thought about it. She said, You ever get in and stand up there and watch that cutter come in? Of course, he doesn't throw any batting practice, but you really don't appreciate how fast the game is on the big league level compared to the minor leagues and lower leagues and, until you get down on the field and see plays like that. It's one of the things the uh, minor leaguers will talk about when they come up here. Boy, everything happens a little faster. You know, the guys get to the ball, they make the plays, the pitchers throw harder, hitters uh, have more power. The 2 1 popped up. Lowell runs out of room. Yankees have won three straight against the Red Sox. Two at Fenway Park in their last series, and then the opener last night. And since the beginning of 2003, these two teams have played 79 regular season games and the Red Sox lead the series 40 to 39. And last year they finished with the same record but the Yankees won the American League East by virtue of winning the season series 10 games to nine. And it's strange the Red Sox have all the better numbers there. But the Yankees find ways to win the games. That's why it's close to 500. Runner goes 3-2. Foul back. But again, as we mentioned, this series has been great for baseball, but baseball has front-loaded four of the six series they'll play into the beginning of the season, and they won't play again until August. The Yankees and the Red Sox were rained out once at Fenway this year, so... A four game set in August is now a five game set. Grounder to Loretta. Two away as the runner advances. Cairo was going. Well, Malky trying to take advantage of that uh, big hole between first and second. There's Mel uh, Cairo uh, going with the pitch. He stays out of the double play, but uh, that sinker ball kind of sinking down and away from that left-handed hitter. It's a little bit harder to, to try to pull it.
Here's Giambi. There's a strike. Now the shift is on, which means that the only infielder on the left side is Lowell. But because there's a runner at second base, Lowell has to play closer to the line than he would if the bases were empty. And that gives Giambi most of the left side of the infield for which to shoot. And he tries to go up the middle, and the shift works. Cora is there, and he will throw out Giambi for the final out of the third. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left on base. There are three in the books here at the stadium. Red Sox one and the Yankees nothing. Time for the Dodge trivia question. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge before Chin Ming Wong, who was the last Yankee to earn a save between his regular starts. We'll find that out in the bottom of the fourth inning. After three, it's one nothing Red Sox. Baratek with a fly ball right center. Giving chase is Johnny Damon. One away. Tonight after the game, keep it right here for My Nine News with Brenda Blackman, Harry Martin, and the award-winning I-Team as they uncover the stories that matter to you. My Nine News tonight after the game. Here's Mike Lowell, a single into the hole at short in the second inning, hitting 330. Round it slowly back to the mound. And they're two away. Well, Wong could use a little breather. We, met, we talked about how economical he is and his pitch count's a little higher. Of course, I, I never thought that was a problem with sinker ball pitchers because they use the expression get tired. I don't think they really get tired, but when the pitch count goes up, they don't try to throw as hard or overthrow the ball and they seem to get better movement more uh, sinking action. So young David Pauly has been very impressive through the first three innings A little blacksmith work done getting shoot. Yep. Getting ready to run to Belmont. Yeah. Pitch the Euclid as a strike. The O2 count one and two. Euclid uh, basically has become the swing man in this uh, lineup for Terry Francona now that uh, Coco Crisp is back. Euclid's uh, hitting in several places in the lineup, including first, second, maybe even fifth, sixth. He's hitting eighth tonight. Pretty good eighth place hitter. Rounded to short, Cairo. And a 1 2 3 inning for Chin Ming Wang. He's thrown 71 pitches through four innings. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Red Sox one, Yankees nothing. Play, I'll set it up for you. Well, let's take a look at our Dodge trivia question and give you the answer. Before Chin Ming Wong in Baltimore, who's the last Yankee to earn a save between his regular starts? And the answer is John Candelaria. Oh, wow. You would have to bring that up. Ooh, that'll strike fear oh, in any left hand no hitters, aren't it? I'm shaking wow. right now. Alex Rodriguez with a ground ball of third. And a nice scoop by Euclid on the low throw by Lowell, one away. That's another thing Euclid has done. Not only uh, has he added the uh, offense to this lineup, but he's also played an excellent first base. Uh, they were a little bit suspicious of maybe uh, Euclid not being able to handle that first base job as well as he's done. Uh, Lowell, he's a gold glover at third, but this is in the dirt and picked out nicely by Euclid. Uh, that's the reason JT Snow 
has been sitting on the bench uh, quite a bit. Look at this. Uh, yeah, Oklahoma, they got a lot of Yankee fans there. Because I don't, of you. Know, I don't know who Gavin is, but. Well, it's because they, they had a couple good players come out of Oklahoma, like Mickey Mantle and Bobby Mercer. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Kelly Stadel. Yeah. Kelly from Lawton. Count 1 and 0 to Posada. Errol Porter, you know, from Oklahoma, too, went to the same high school with Porter. That one's driven deep to left center field, giving chase is crisp. He's on the run, on the track, he can't make the play. Ball bounds off the wall in the left center, where Manny Ramirez gets the carry. It's a double for Posada with one out. Well, one thing a left-handed batter does not want to do is think about pulling that sinker ball from the right-hander. And Jorge sent it uh, deep into center field. No chance for Crisp. And Manny there to back Coco Crisp up. And a one-out double by Jorge. Deepest part of the Yankee ballpark. Well, the time runs on second base, but it might take more than a single to get Posada home. He has not been running well because of that torn hamstring tendon. He's taking it base to base. Pits the Canoas outside. What Posada looked like on that double. Just about, uh, you know, maybe half speed, maybe three quarters at the most. And that's about all he can go, but uh, they need him in the lineup every day. And the pitch to Cano is a strike. Cano with a single right in the second inning. Uh, Robbie Cano in batting practice. I don't think I've ever seen anybody hit the ball as hard and on the line like he did at batting practice this afternoon. And uh, he was preparing for uh, Paulie tonight. He had Tony Pena after throwing batting practice. And he wanted everything from the middle plate away so he could work on trying to go up the middle in the other way. Line foul. And when you think about that, when you're thinking middle plate away, and you know you're quick inside anyway, you automatically, if he throws something inside, you automatically react to it, just as uh, Cano did on this pitch here. Veritek setting away, and that pitch is a little bit inside, a little bit up, and automatically the hitter just reacts to that pitch. One two chop toward first backing up Euclid flip to Pauly as Posada will move to third. There's Bobby Bacala of the Sopranos he made it through another season. His eye is healed. Toronto's return next January. They certainly keep you waiting. Did, did you see <laughs> the last episode? Yeah, I did see did it. You? Did they you? Went, they went to the family style, didn't they? Yeah, it was like a Walton's Christmas. Yeah, really? <laughs> I was surprised. And that was, of course, Steve Sharippa is his real name. He plays Bobby Bacala on the Sopranos. The 1 outside one and one. Tying run is on third base. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Right, you can see one of the reasons that young David Pauly has been effective tonight versus uh, a much more experienced pitcher last night, Josh Beckett. Well, the, the Yankees can load up on those hard throwers, and if you don't throw that fastball in the right spot, they tee off on it. But tonight, the big swings are not 
doing the job because Paulie's got nice change of speeds and a lot of movement. Swing and a miss. Speaking of that, a lot of movement on that fastball. And Phillips down on strikes. No runs are hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We played four at the stadium. Red Sox one, and the Yankees nothing. We go to the top of the fifth inning. Alex Cora against Chin Ming Wong. Pitches outside 1-0. On the Dunkin' Donuts scoreboard, it's 1-5-0 and for the Red Sox, 0-4-0 for the Yankees. And the difference in the game is a David Ortiz home run into the first row of the upper deck in right field. That's a one out in the third. And the 1-0. Upstairs. I always like the leadoff hitter like Alex Cora. I know the, in, the corner infielders are playing in anyway, but... You show that bunt, you know, the first pitch, and it uh, just draws them in maybe even another step and a half, two steps closer to you, and it just gives you a better chance to slap the ball by. Hot shot to short, Cairo. One away. Nice play by Cairo. This ball slicing away from him. He had to get his body in front of it, and then give good footwork plenty of time and gets him by step and a half Cairo filling in for the uh, second game for Derek Jeter who's out with that bad right thumb and the pitch to crisp chops slowly toward Cairo charges has no play and that's where they miss Derek Jeter right there that's the Jeter specialty but Cairo could not glove cleanly and fire yeah, even as great as Jeter is on that play, I think with Coco Crisp's speed, unless it was hit close enough where A-Rod could cut it off, I don't think they had any chance to get Coco Crisp. Speaking of filling in uh, in the infield, there's an, another look at Miggy trying to glove it and make the transfer. Yankees made a player change before the game today in case the, they might need a an extra infielder for longer than they anticipate. And it's a player that we've seen before in a Tampa Bay uniform. Nick Green. There's Nick. The Yankees acquired him a few weeks ago. Went from Durham over to Columbus and now uh, with, with Derek Jeter unavailable to play they call up uh, Nick Green and as Kim pointed out on the pregame show over on yes they designated Terrence Long for assignment. Yankees are hoping that Long gets through a team could claim him. And they they like him they, they think that he's a good fifth outfielder but they already have a couple of those so they felt they needed the backup infielder with Jeter out for a while. Well Long gives them a veteran outfielder and uh, a good defensive outfielder. And Joe and the organization hoping that Long will go back to Triple A. Stay in the organization. Along with Bobby Mercer and Jim Cott, I'm Michael Kay, and you're watching Yankees baseball on my nine. Top of the fifth inning, runner on first base, one out, as the Red Sox lead the Yankees, one nothing in the second game of this four game set. Well they just don't know how long uh, Jeter's going to be out. Uh, he's getting better every day but they don't want to be short handed on the infield and uh, yesterday Jeter tried to throw the baseball tried to swing a bat didn't actually get in the cage and hit any baseballs but uh, he was unable to throw it shut it down immediately and just continues to take treatment every day but is getting better. Now we we give you so many numbers and so many stats and Sometimes the stats just don't mean much and you'll see Jeter trying to throw yesterday. Yeah that, that problem uh, where he got hit back in uh, Baltimore is on the right thumb but it's on the the the, uh, the joint of the right thumb and when you squeeze the baseball to try to throw it that's very painful and that's the reason he couldn't play. Anyway the point I was going to make about the uh, the injuries and the stats. Since 1996 when Derek joined the Yankees full time the Yankees winning percentage in games that Jeter has missed is 622 they're 69 and 42 
that's actually higher than their winning percentage in the games that Jeter has played and the winning percentage with Jeter in there 607 but again you can do anything you want with numbers well how would they do if they played oh I don't know those 1600 games without Jeter rather than you know the the 120 games that they play without Jeter that's the difference and how would they have done it uh, they were playing in the playoffs in the World Series mm -hmm. without Jeter. So you can say well they have a higher winning percentage yeah, right. without Jeter but they, they played so 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 many fewer games and it's very odd to see Jeter on the extra players list but there he is with Stinnett Green and Thompson and he's really not an extra player because Joe Torre said he would not want him to pinch run he said what if he has a head first slide and hurts the thumb worse let's see if they turn two there's one there's two they do. And it's a double play, 4 6 3. Second double play for Chin Ming Wong. No runs a hit. Nobody left at the end of four and a half. We're halfway through. Red Sox won. Yankees nothing. Tonight's smile of the game is brought to you by Vital Dent. For a healthy smile, go to vitaldent.com today. Nice glasses and a nice smile. Bernie Williams wraps one to right center field. That's going to be trouble. That ball is gone. A home run. Bernie Williams. And the Yankees and the Red Sox are tied at one. See if this affects Pauly. Pitch to Cairo. Another deep drive to right center. Coco Crisp got a good jump and makes the play on the warning track. One away. That curtain call. I mean, here it is a, a one nothing game. Fifth inning. Bernie gets a home run. Wow, that was centered and he centered it. But the appreciation for him, of course, just builds with every game and every at bat. But I think that's one of the reasons when you hear players like. Jason Giambi say you know how great it is to play in New York because if you don't do well they'll let you know about it but if you do I don't think there's uh, any fans that are more appreciative of when you do good things. That's a Johnny Damon is a strike. Oh you just take a look at the longevity and, and uh, as we take a look at the Dunkin Donuts uh, scoreboard Bernie times it up for that home run but uh, the numbers that Bernie's put up he's he was born and raised in this organization. And he has uh, just done an outstanding job, obviously. More than outstanding. And didn't know if even Bernie was going to be back this year in a lesser role. But that hasn't turned out to be. I mean, Bernie Williams' role has been as important as, as Sheffield and Matsui. Those two guys are out, so you really got to look to Bernie to, to pick up the slack. And he's been an everyday player and has produced. Three home runs now, 26 runs batted in. And the count is two and two on Damon. I think the most important thing about that was that uh, Bernie last year, kind of a lame duck year for him. Uh, it was the end of his contract. Uh, I'm sure we'll see Bernie's number out there when he decides to retire. But the fact that uh, Bernie wanted to come back and play for the Yankees. Uh, there was a lot of speculation that he wasn't going to play any more baseball, that he was going to retire, but he just wasn't ready to hang up. Uh, the leather are the spikes and the one thing that he wanted to do is play for the organization that he's played every inning in Major League Baseball for and that's the New York Yankees. He said he couldn't picture himself playing somewhere else and watching the Yankees on TV in the playoffs in October. Lined right at Loretta two away. But you know it was seven I think it was about seven years ago now that Bernie was very very close to join in the Red Sox. I think it took a conversation with the Yankee owner George Steinbrenner to get keep Bernie in pinstripes That's when he was in the uh, peak of his career his free agent year but uh, we showed you the retired numbers there and I don't know that 
that Bernie will end up in the Cooperstown Hall of Fame but he's going to end up on that wall. I mean it's so unusual to see a player these days play his entire come up with an organization and play the entire career and be as successful as Bernie has been. Melky Cabrera is 0 for 2 a double play 6 6 3 and a ground ball a second. And the count now two and zero. Oh. I know a lot of people like to take a you know a shot at the Yankee minor league organization, but they have produced some some really quality players out of their system. Uh, you know, Bernie, one of those players, been here for many many years. But uh, just to go back to 1996 and the foundation that they've built out of their own organization. You know, with Jeter and Mariano and and Bernie, Andy Pettit was a part of that. Jorge Posada. You talk about teams like to be strong up the middle and that's for a while the Yankees had Posada Jeter Soriano and Bernie out in center field. Now they have Cano who's also homegrown product. Slow ground ball a second. Loretta gobbles it up and that'll do it. But the Yankees tie the score and they do it in a Bronx Barber way. They turn back the clock. Bernie Williams the veteran launches the first pitch of the inning into the bleachers in right center. 1-1 one, one game. Next Tuesday right here on My9 the Bronx Bombers go face to face with the Indians. Catch all the baseball action. Yankees Indians next Tuesday at 7 p.m. on a special edition of Friday Night Yankees only on My9. This is a special edition of Friday Night Yankees, the Tuesday edition, and we go to the sixth inning. Chin Ming Wong still in there. It's a 1 1 game. David Ortiz will lead off. He fouls that away. They yeah, we were talking about Ortiz and how he loves that ball low and inside as you take a look at the pitches by inning for Wong. Very economical in the fourth and in the fifth. But that low inside, that low inside. Is the target that uh, he commands? I mean, he commands the inside part of the plate. Wow! High fly ball left field. Melky Cabrera, one away. I don't know about you, Kitty, but uh, you know, when you get a hitter that could command a certain part of that plate, uh, you know, I know the pitchers like to take a certain part of the plate and utilize that as being their own piece of that uh, home plate area. Yeah, that's why I think that pitch right there. That's why I think the pitch low and away is still the best pitch in baseball because you don't have to have a perfect pitch out there. It takes a little more strength to drive it over the left field wall opposed to that pitch that hangs middle in that you can just drop the barrel on and it's gone. Pitch to Ramirez. Goes to the backstop. Seems like the crowd was waiting for that. And Manny looking into the crowd as if, why are you cheering? Well, just flip the pages back to Scott Proctor at Fenway. <laughs> well, you can see where pa Posada's got his uh, target is yeah, low, and, low and away, just as you really, were talking about. Yeah, I don't really think that was that close to, to Manny, but you know, he steps into the ball. And they almost backed up into the Red Sox dugout. Wow. He has got some uh, both. Of, I mean Paulie doesn't throw as hard as Juan but they have both got a lot of late movement on their pitches tonight. And, and that's the reason like Ortiz that last pitch is pretty good pitch but with that little late movement uh, you get underneath it a bit. Three and zero, and Jorge with a trip to the mound. I think just a reminder that uh, might as well throw this pitch like it's zero and two. Yeah, right. Manny's <laughs> going to be—he'll uh, be waiting for something on three and zero. When the Yankees were at Fenway Park, and that's the last time I checked this stat, and the Red Sox actually handed it out. The Red Sox were five for five when giving green lights on three and zero. And Terry Francona's thought process is: Why should I have a guy take? 
a fastball down the middle. He said if the count goes to three and one, he might get a slider after that. He said, so certain times I'm going to give a green light on three and zero. Well, if you're going to give one, this would be the guy to give it to. And a strike. Perfect pitch, knee high outside corner. Again, that movement. See, Manny looks back at Bill Walkie, but to him it looked outside. But the late movement took it back across the corner. Trying to make it 2 1 right there, count 3 and 2. That, three, go ahead, Kate. I think he cracked all the vertebrae on that <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the reason that you can take a 3 0 pitch because uh, normally you're going to get the same pitch on 3 and 1. Broken bat, base hit to left center field. Ramirez makes a big turn. He's going for two. Here's the throw. Out. Ramirez was thinking double out of the box, running on his old friend Johnny Damon's arm, and he gets gunned down 8 4, trying to stretch. I say one thing, he didn't hesitate. He had his mind made up right there. Hey, I remember Johnny doesn't throw too well. But he got it in there in plenty of time here. Well, I think Manny makes around $20 million a year, and he makes uh, 10000 for running the bases and 10000 for playing <laughs> the defense, and, <laughs> and the rest of it goes for hitting. Here's Trot Nixon. And there's a strike. Of course, I, I'd rather see him do that than jog down the first baseline that he's accused of sometimes. Because you know you you force Damon to you know if he you force Damon you know to throw it in there and throw it accurately if it's a little off target. And there's a delay in the game right now as a fan jumped out of the left field stands and is running across the outfield. And we'll soon wish he didn't. Well, I think you were right, though, when uh, when when Michael was talking about what he saw his uh, old ex uh, teammate over there, yeah. Johnny Damon, knowing that uh, Damon doesn't have that good of an arm, and he saw him going a little bit to his right, maybe thought he was going to catch him a little bit off balance. Yeah, uh, Manny gets accused sometime of not running hard, yeah. so I think in that case, uh, Francona is not going to find fault with that. Is you know, he's trying to be aggressive and thinking that Johnny wouldn't throw it too well, throw it off target. He'd have the lead run scoring position. Well, the stadium security handled it quickly, efficiently, and they make their way back to their post and we're ready for baseball. one on Nixon. Popped up. Cairo will make the play for the final out of the inning. No run to hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's a 1-1 game. Tonight after the game, keep it right here on My 9 News for highlights and analysis of tonight's action. The ChevyOffers.com sports wrap-up tonight after the game only on My 9 News. Crowd still buzzing from Manny getting thrown out at second base, trying to stretch a single into a double. Manny hustling out of the box, but a good throw by Johnny Damon, and now we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Tied at one, a pair of home runs, the only offense in the game. David Ortiz and Bernie Williams, obviously both solo shots. It's Giambi, Rodriguez, and Posada here in the sixth. 
pitches outside 1 0. And a big inning for young David Pauley. I mean, he's given the Red Sox, I think, more than they thought he would, but now he's in a position you can get through the sixth inning, and Terry Francona can start looking to the bullpen, and he's got three tough hitters to get out. And a strike. Mentioned the Red Sox made a move also before the game, and uh, Terry Francona said in spring training, "We don't want to bring this kid up. We don't think he's ready." But I think because of the situation of their pitching staff, they called up Craig Hansen, six foot six inch uh, right-hander, who's just got electric stuff. The Yankees saw him briefly at uh, the end of the year, a couple years ago. Yeah, Hansen uh, from uh, Glen Cove, New York. Out of St. John's. Now he was drafted as a, a short reliever, but in Pawtucket, they've been using him in long relief and also starting him. So they're still unsure. I guess if you stretch someone out as a starter, you can use them whichever way you want. And yeah. uh, he's called up now to be a long man. But could obviously shift to shorter roles if they want. The 2 2. Foul back. Well, well you I know, you, I'm impressed. I mean, this kid is. We talked about the fact that he might be a little dazed by the Yankee Stadium atmosphere, but here he is in a 1 1 game in the uh, sixth inning, and the, the reputation he had is, you know, being a little strike zone shy. And that's not the case tonight. This will be his 70th pitch of the night. And a ground ball of first. Euclid takes it himself. And it's one away. Out of town scoreboard is brought to you by Sims. And here is Alex Rodriguez. You know, if you take a look at it, uh, losing Johnny Damon uh, had a pretty big impact on this Boston Red Sox ball club because they had to trade a guy like Bronson Arroyo uh, that was. They're starting rotation and uh, if you take a look at the rotation now they had Bronson Arroyo you know the back end of the rotation is kind of what's hurting for the Red Sox but they had to they had to trade Bronson Arroyo in order to make up for the void that was left out in center field for Coco Crisp is now playing. And the pitch is low. You mentioned uh, Michael Hansen being used as a starter he started last Friday night. But Pot Tuckett went four innings, so he would be very capable of coming in tonight and giving him uh, two or three innings if necessary. Well, the Red Sox have gotten a lot of grief for the Arroyo trade because the guy they got for him, Willie Mopena, is now out with a bad hand, and uh, Bronson Arroyo has done great. The Cincinnati Reds are one of the surprise teams. In baseball, and he's a great hitter, which they didn't know. Ground ball to third, backhanded nicely by Lowell. The long throw got him. Yeah, Gonzalez is not playing it short tonight, but if he were, and Core is okay there, but they could throw a gold glove infield at you, these Red Sox, and there's one of them right there. Lowell back behind the bag. And a strong throw to Euclid. Get a rod by a couple of strides. Lead the American League in fielding. Pitch the Posadas inside. Posada walked in the second. And doubled off the wall in left center field in the fourth. Count two and zero. Oh. Seventy-five pitches for Paulie, forty-eight strikes. Good strike to ball ratio. And the count two and one. Hit for Posada. So 
So he has two of the Yankees six hits against Pauly. And here's Robinson Cano. Cano single to right. That was in the second. Grounded to first in the fourth. He is 11 for his last 24. Hitting 311, two home runs, 22 ribbies. Way out in front of the chains, the count on one. Enormous crowd here at Yankee Stadium. Another sellout. Yesterday, over 55,000. No different today. A massive humanity here in the Bronx. One day, I think, uh, you know, when Cano continues to mature as a hitter and learns all the pitchers and, and situations and giving himself a chance uh, in certain counts of hitting pitches that he could drive out of the ballpark, uh, he's, he's got the power to. Maybe one day hit uh, 20, 25, even 30 home runs. One thing that Mattingly talks to him about uh, a lot is uh, trying to hit those home runs because he gets into that lifting mode. Chop slowly toward first. And Euclid will flip to Paulie, and that'll do it. An impressive six innings for the 22 year old rookie. Six in the books. We go to the seventh. It's a 1 1 game. Hey fans, become part of the winning team by joining the New York Yankees fan club. You'll receive a welcome letter, an official membership card, four issues of Yankees magazine, and special ticket discounts, as well as exclusive fan club items. To join, call 1-800-GO-YANKS or log on to yankees.com. We go to the seventh inning. Pauly has been very, very good. It's a 1-1 game. So is Chin Ming Wong. Struggled early, but has settled down. He will deal to Baratek. There's a strike. 1 7 0 for Boston, 1 6 0 for the Yankees. If you joined us late, the Boston run on David Ortiz's home run, the Yankee run on a home run by Bernie Williams. Count 0 and 2. And this is an unusual game for this uh, rivalry. These two teams usually get together and slug it out. You don't see many pitchers' duels like this. Last night was a game we anticipated the pitchers' duel. Yeah. <laughs> Strike three. Baratek down looking, and now he's looking at Bill Walkie. Always dangerous for a catcher to argue because he wants that pitch for his pitcher. Well, you're going to see some movement on these yeah. uh, three pitches here, especially that one that uh, struck Veritek out. That's what the ball that you give up on. It looks like it's going to be inside and with that late move and it moves over the inside part of the plate. There's Mike Lowell. And a strike. Count one and one. Oh, Wong, he is, uh, he's dialed it in now. 95 total pitches, but wherever Posada puts that glove, uh, he's hitting it. Loop to right field coming on Bernie Williams. He can't make the play. Now he kicks the ball. Lowell's going for two. Here's the throw. Here's the play. Safe. That'll be a single and an E9 as Bernie kicked the ball. Pretty good throw by Bernie Williams. Well, Mike Lowell hasn't hit the ball particularly hard in this year, but he's coming up with some hits. There's the uh, Bernie trying to pick up the high hop. Like he didn't see that ball well with the hop. Then recovered, made the throw in, but Lowell. I think maybe the hop kind of fooled him a little bit. 
Well, if you're not accustomed to playing right field, and Bernie isn't, that you know that ball spins a little differently out there than when you're playing center. Pitch the Euclid is outside. Wong closing in on the 100 pitch mark. He's at 97 right now. Well, he knocked it down, and uh, it was the fact that when he kicked it uh, that allowed uh, Lowell to go to second. If he kept it in front of him, uh, Lowell would have stayed at first. Try it outside, now inside the count 2 0. And the count three and oh now Posada wants to go out and talk with Wong. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the aforementioned New York Yankees Scott Proctor warming for the Yankees. Pitched an inning yesterday. And that's Papelbon. He's the Red Sox closer, just starting to stretch. Paulie has no intention of giving the ball up. There's a strike. Just missed. Wow, you don't see that kind of reaction from Chin Ming Wan very often. He really thought he got that pitch taken away from him. But it, uh, Posada pulled it in, but it looked like it was outside. I'm, I'm a little surprised right now, and, and maybe that's the state of the Red Sox bullpen that Terry Francona does not have a pitcher warming up. If the Red Sox were to score here, you know, I would think they'd want to take Paulie out of the game unless they say, well, we're going to take the training wheels off. It's a little different pitching a 1 1 game. And now all of a sudden, if your team takes the lead and you're out there and you're asked to hold the lead, that's a little more pressure on a young pitcher. Yeah, plus uh, if he does take the lead, then uh, he actually leaves the game uh, with a chance to win it with some veteran guys out of the bullpen taking over in the latter part. And, and a good feeling about yeah. how well he pitched tonight versus if you go back out there and give up a couple, then that, that kind of deflates that. Here's Alex Cora, runners on first and second with one out. Caught by Andy Phillips. He's all over the place tonight. <laughs> and they better try somebody else out. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference how hard you hit. Don Mattingly certainly appreciates this. Uh, the great uh, first baseman that he was. But once again, Andy Phillips taking an extra base hit away from a Red Sox. He turned the last one into a double play and thought about turning this one into a double play. We tried back. him out in the third as well. Yeah. And uh, this may have been hit a little bit harder, but the runner was off of that pitch and he turned it into a DP. So maybe Mattingly not only working with the Phillips at the bat, he might be working with him with the glove. Boy, he's good, isn't he? Pitch to Crisp is a little bit low. I thought that was good base running by Euclid. You know, he. Didn't take the step towards second like usually happens. He was very aware of where the ball was and headed back to first. Could have been doubled up. Not sure he had enough time to get off the bag <laughs> far enough. Count one and one. There's Euclid. Uh, yeah, he uh, the moment that ball was in the air, he was headed back to first base just in case. Phillips came down with it. Slice the other way. Foul. 
after that broken finger uh, coming into tonight's game uh, Coco Crisp with only about 57 maybe 58 at bats this year. So his timing is uh, not where he would like it. Two two count two men on two outs two runs on the board one for the Yankees one for the Red Sox. Double barreled action as Myers joins Proctor. Well Coco in his last uh, two at bats uh, he's he's worked long over as far as pitches are concerned. He ended up uh, with a base hit. Back of the fifth inning. This will be pitch 108. The 2-2. Two -two. 94 mile an hour fastball high three and two that gives the Red Sox an advantage now Lowell doesn't have great speed but he'll take off on the three two pitch with two outs. Beside of just checking with Wong, he Jorge catcher makes suggestions. Pitcher should have the final say. They they don't put losing catcher in the box score, just losing pitcher. But Jorge probably wanted to just confirm with him. What you know? What would you rather throw? You want to go to the change up here? It's been a good pitch for him. 108 is the season high pitch count for Wong. 105 was the previous high. Runners go, grounded to Phillips. He's going to flip to Wong, who beats Chris to the bag. So Wong works out of trouble. No runs to hit, one error, and two men left on base. At the end of six and a half, it's time for the seventh inning stretch here at the stadium. And everyone here at the stadium is about to honor America as we listen to the voice of Yankee Stadium, Mr. Bob Shepard. Ron Guidry congratulating Chin Ming Wong on a job well done. In all likelihood, he will not pitch the eighth inning, but he did a good job over seven. Win against form. Usually he's economical in the early innings, does well, and then has a little trouble. Tonight he, uh, he struggled as far as his control early on, and then uh, settled in, did a great job. Looks like Farnsworth will get the call in the eighth inning, no surprise. And there's a strike. So it'll be the bottom third of the Yankee order. Rudy Sienez warming for the Red Sox. Andy Phillips, Bernie Williams, and Miguel Cairo. Phillips has a seven-game hitting streak on the line. Count one and two. Phillips fly to right and struck out. Well if you talk to people around the Red Sox the traveling party not necessarily people in uniform the general perception was that you will not see Paulie for long today. Yeah. And here he is in the seventh inning pitching very very well. Not at all unnerved by a crowd of fifty five thousand plus. Not unnerved by the opponent maybe got the nerves out of the way against the Blue Jays eighty four pitches for Paulie fifty four strikes. One of the differences in Pauly tonight versus uh, the last time that he pitched against the Blue Jays that he didn't use his change up a whole lot. Grounded up the middle. Cora. One away. And when you're considered to have uh, one, uh, a good change up to go along with that sinker ball. He's never got a chance to utilize it. Bernie Williams with a home run in the fifth inning gets a nice hand as he walks 
up to the plate. The fans are almost treating this as a victory lap for Bernie Williams, a farewell season. But I talked to Bernie a couple times in spring training, and he said, I want to play a couple of years. This is not my last year. Of course, he could change his mind one way or the other. High fly ball, right center. Nixon. Two outs. What that changeup can do to you, that's uh, what we were talking about, that change. It looks like it's a pretty good pitch, but it gets that hitter just a little bit out in front, you know, and you got to watch Bernie just a little bit out in front, so mm, he's got to kind of lift it. It makes you want to lift the ball and hit it off the end of the bat, and that's what happened. Here's Miguel Cairo with two outs in the seventh. And the pitch is high. Cairo, one of the Yankees' six hits. He's one for two. Great guy off the bench for the Yankees, filling in now for the injured Derek Jeter. Can play all the infield positions. Count one and one. Jeter missing his second straight game. Yeah, this is the uh, this was the word we had on Paulie from the minor leagues that he was a strike throwing machine, but didn't do it in his first start in the big leagues. But he's certainly doing it tonight. And as Bobby mentioned, he's making great use of that changeup. One two right back to Pauly under his glove and under the hand of Loretta and Pauly's looking at his glove as if to say how did I miss that we'll see how they score it looking at it again should be an E1 pretty routine play not hit hard wow very kind scored a base hit could be a two base hit yeah. both of them missed it. <laughs> a little tougher play for Loretta, but they're all Paulie had to do is get the glove down. Bill Shannon, the official scorer, quickly said base hit. Well, every time I see somebody try to pick up that ball with the bare hand, uh, I always think of back uh, with Scott Brocious at third base. Uh, yeah. I think he was about as good as he I've ever seen. When he put that bare hand down and that bare hand met the ball, uh, he didn't miss it. There's a strike to Damon. Cairo's got four stolen bases. I mean, you know, he is somebody that you just cannot ignore over at first. Count one and one. Yeah, good time to go, too, because, uh, you know, if he were to get thrown out, you got Johnny Damon leading off. The eighth inning. That and the fact that you can pick the right pitch. We talked about that changeup you know, that uh, Davey throws. So that was a base hit by Damon. Served it in the left field. That was a Johnny, the typical Johnny Damon hit. Yeah. Yankees saw him when in a Red Sox uniform get a lot of those at Fenway Park. Al Nipper, the pitching coach, going to come out. I, I think the only thing Paulie's doing right now is stewing over that uh, that ground ball that he knew he should have had and been out of the inning. 
Hey, Yankee fans, always traveling and missing games? Watch Yankee games live online whenever you are away from New York, exclusively from MLB.tv. Yankees.com has more live games than anyone else. Yankees.com, where baseball is always on. So Melky Cabrera is 0 for 3. His eight-game hitting streak is on the line. A big moment for him and for the Yankees. First and second, two outs. Bottom of the seventh, game tied at one. Pitch is high, 1-0. Yankees hitless in five at bats with runners in scoring position tonight. Well, a pretty good spot right here for Cabrera. He, he's missed with two pitches. Paul, he has. Now you look down in the on deck circle and you've got uh, Giambi there. You certainly don't want to pass Cabrera to get to him, so he should get a fastball to hit right here. Count three and oh. Rudy Sienez is ready. Giambi is on deck. Missed outside, base is loaded. Boy, it's a tough walk for Terry Francona. This kid pitched such a great ball game and is just missing that little tapper back to the mound that's gotten him in this fix. Well, the Red Sox won at length out of Pauly. He took them two outs into the seventh inning. And he just said, you pitched your butt off. And he did. And Pauly departs, and he leaves the bases loaded for the Red Sox bullpen. Giambi's up with two outs next. Well, David Pauly hands over a bases loaded situation with two outs. You see the job that he did, but all three runners on base are his responsibility as Terry Francona makes the call to the bullpen, brought to you by Verizon Online DSL. If not for that Cairo ground ball under his glove, he's got seven solid innings in. But Francona making him feel good, as is David Ortiz. Everyone knows how well he pitched, but... How his record turns out is up to Rudy Sienez. You see his numbers. Bases loaded. Sienez against Giambi. 1-0. Now the one thing the Red Sox cannot do, they don't have a left-handed thrower in their bullpen. And I actually think uh, that Keith Folk uh, is not even available tonight. He's had a bad back. Of course, he's been a little bit ineffective this year, too. But... 
Count goes 2-0, and oh, no place to put Giambi. You normally would see in this situation here, you know, a specialty left-hander to come in to pitch to Giambi. Uh, you'd see Mike Myers, but he's yeah. in pinstripes yeah, he's with year. the Yankees. <laughs> and they have seven pitchers in the bullpen, all right-handed. The 2-0. Big healthy cut for Giambi. Looking for a power fastball and uh, took a little bit off of that. Two one. Three and one. Well, you couldn't have a better hitter up there from a Yankee standpoint for a guy who's uh, not going to offer it a pitch outside the strike zone. Three one. And the count is full. Pitch uh, at best, I think, has got to be a borderline pitch uh, right there. It had enough of the play, but I don't know if it was uh, if it was too high. That's a little above the belt. In, in today's game, they don't call as many high strikes, but that certainly was within the zone. Well, you can start the merry-go-round. Bases loaded, three-two, two outs. He walked, and the Yankees lead two to one. Much to the dismay of David Pauley. That's an RBI for Giambi. Cairo scores the go-ahead run, and Chin Ming Wong can now get a win. Dan has thought he could uh, get a breaking ball in there. Wow. That's Man. some gutsy call yeah, there. That's a gutsy call. Especially when you got a guy like Giambi that you know is not going to offer it at, at a bad pitch. And David Pauley into it, and you see his frustration. Boy, pitched a great game. Here's Alex Rodriguez. Lofted to right field, giving chase as Euclid he runs out of room. Well, that's some at bat by Jason Giambi. Whew. Like you said, uh, you couldn't have a better guy up there. He's a guy that sees more pitches than anybody. In the American League. Yeah, you throw a 3-2 hook to an aggressive hitter like that, you might get him to chase it, but you're not going to get Giambi to do that. Giambi picked up his 47th ribby. Kurt Schilling starts tomorrow night. Foul back. Veritek, like Posada does in these situations, they'll... They'll try it out to the mound, just kind of check with the pitcher, see what they'd like to do. Normally in these situations, Alex sees a lot of high fastballs. <laughs> the 0-2. He struck him out. Well, so Paulie appreciative of that strikeout, but the Yankees take the lead. One run, two hits, no errors, and the bases are left loaded. We go to the eighth. It's 2-1 Yanks. Yankees lead 2-1 as we go to the eighth. Let's take a look at the Dunkin' Donuts in-game box score for the Red Sox. America runs on Dunkin'. Each team has eight hits, so... For the Red Sox, their offense came from the number three hole so far tonight against Chen Ming Wong. A long home run by David Ortiz into the right field upper deck. Karen back out onto the field. Manny Ramirez, two for two. Top of the order's done well. Trot Nixon and Jason Veritek have been held down. Mike Lowell, two more hits. Euclid's a hit. And Alex Cora, 0 for three. So that's the Red Sox in-game box score. But they will not be facing Chen Ming Wong. That's who that box score was put up against. And now it's Kyle Farnsworth's turn. And you see Farnsworth's numbers, a hit per inning, a little high walk total, but a lot of strikeouts. And when you look at the do-ups, Loretta, Ortiz, and Ramirez, you think, well, you worry about Ortiz and 
Ramirez obviously if you're Farnsworth but Loretta's the guy who's really had a lot of success against him. And Farnsworth deals. Eight for 18. Against the Yankee reliever. Farnsworth has not pitched in four days. Last time June 2nd at Baltimore. Johnny Damon's right there. One out. Wow, this is where it's fun for the fans who stuck around here for the uh, eighth inning. You're going to get power against power. But probably the game. You know, you got the yep. next two hitters up here. Yeah, even though if the Yankees, uh, if Farnsworth gets him out, Mo will come in to try to get the save. But it's Farnsworth here that has to pitch against the toughest, tougher part of the lineup. Well, the Yankees go into their overshift against David Ortiz. Alex Rodriguez, the only Yankee on the left side of the infield. And the outfield kind of straight away against the lefty swinging Ortiz. Popped up. But foul. That's that good fastball. That was that uh, inside pitch. We're going to take a look at the third inning uh, home run that he hit. Put the uh, Red Sox out in front, and it got out in a hurry. Off the uh, hands of the fans up at the upper deck, bounce back onto the field. These are the situations that Kyle's been burned a few times with his slider. And uh, talking to Joe Torrey about that, Joe in turn talked to Bobby Cox in Atlanta. He said, you know, it'll frustrate you sometimes because a guy throw 100 miles an hour. Sometimes he'll get touched up on his slider, but overall get a lot of guys out with it, too. So you live with the ones that he hangs and you appreciate the ones that uh, he gets strikeouts with. Yeah, that was a 97 mile an hour fastball there. And you could see Posada and uh, Farnsworth trying to nip the outside part. Uh, stay away uh, if, if they can from that power of Ortiz. Uh, with that kind of fastball, you can also pitch up in the zone a little bit more. Hard to get on top of it from a hitter standpoint. Like that there. 96 miles an hour. Country hardball. And we've seen Ortiz. He doesn't usually miss that low ball, but uh, sometimes he has a little bit of, of a harder time to catch you up with the high fastball. Two, two. He struck him out. 97 miles an hour. Power against power. We're talking about good old country hardball. Well, that's it right there. And uh, he just threw that fastball by Ortiz on the upper outside part of the plate. And now here's another big league matchup. Manny Ramirez against Kyle Farnsworth. One more look at Ortiz going down on strikes. Ramirez two for two tonight with a walk. One and oh. Fly ball, left center, giving chase is Cabrera on the track at the wall, leaps, and he makes the play. He made the play. He took away a game-tying home run for Manny Ramirez. Farnsworth can't believe it. Ramirez can't believe it. Cabrera, he believes.
lose it. Oh, what a play by the 21-year-old rookie. And Johnny Damon plays cheerleader. That was a home run that would have tied the game. seem like that bad of an outfielder anymore. <laughs> you know, even Manny Ramirez, the guy that hit the ball, enjoyed this play here. Let's take another look at it. Now, one reason that uh, Cabrera had a chance to make this play, he got a good jump on the ball, but he timed it perfectly as he got back to the fence, taking that home run away from Ramirez. There's a breaking ball strike to Posada. Getting back and the leap and the time big factor is uh, what a play by Melky Cabrera in left field. And he's, uh, yeah, he's going to show it to Manny Ramirez who couldn't believe it. But after he saw it, uh, Manny's, Manny's eyes, another look at it, took a look at the fence just to kind of see where he was at and the timing leap. And there it is. Boy, the reaction of Johnny Damon was priceless. Oh, Especially he went up with the catch for him. Manny Ramirez <laughs> couldn't believe it either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave him a curtain call for defense. Yeah. How about that? Lee Mazzelli there. And get up there and enjoy it. Yeah, the Yankees win this game. He gets the save. Watch Damon. He'll go up for the catch with him. And then he's the first one he knows he made the play. And then he starts to punch into the air. <laughs> Unedited enthusiasm right there by Johnny Damon. Well, we mentioned earlier, this is so much against form for these two teams. As hot as this rivalry's been, it's usually blowouts. You don't often see low-scoring games like this and games decided by great defense. And Posada down on strikes. This is priceless too, Michael. Watch David Pauly. Great job by the crew. Great yeah. pictures. Pitch the Canoas outside. <laughs> Manny being an old left fielder, he enjoys that. Base hit by Cano. <laughs> He's two for four. Let's take a look at the New York Yankees in-game box score. Brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. Yankees have nine hits now. Cano's two for four. Johnny Damon's two for four. And two, three, and four in the Yankee order. Has really not done that much today. A couple of walks and an RBI on a walk, but uh, Jorge Posada's two for three and Miguel Cairo two for three. Bernie Williams with that home run. Cano goes, and he's in there. Boy, Veritek had no chance. I mean, Cano just gambled with CNS that he wasn't going to give him a look, and he didn't. He barely picked his foot up, and Cano was on his way to second base. First on the base for uh, Cano, and uh, I'm sure this has a lot to do with the scouting report. Yankees have nine hits, and they've had 12 consecutive games of 10 hits or more. And if they get one more hit, it'll be 13 straight, and uh, that's the most of any team 
since the expansion era of 1961. The 97 White Sox and the 99 Red Sox also had it in 13 straight. Strike three, Andy Phillips is down. So he is 0 for 4. Time for the out of town scoreboard brought to you by Jeep, makers of the all new 2006 Jeep Commander. Mariano Rivera is getting ready. And here's Bernie Williams. Bernie hit a home run in the fifth inning to tie the game at one. And a bases loaded walk to Giambi in the seventh inning gave the Yankees this two to one lead. One and oh. I would think if they fall behind, they got a parking place at first base. I know Cairo's a pesky little hitter, but. I would think with a parking place here they're not going to give Bernie anything good to hit and if they fall behind him 2 0 they might just put him on. Manny Del Carmen and John Papelbon. Chop toward first Euclid gobbles it up and he will beat Bernie to the bag and that will do it. We have played eight Yankees lead two to one and why do they lead two to one. Because of a great play by Melky Cabrera in the top of the inning, robbing a home run from Manny Ramirez. Mariano Rivera will try to close it out next. <laughs> New York Yankees baseball on my nine is brought to you in part by Audi. It's greater to lead than follow. Heineken, it's all about the beer. And by Acura, your life your car. The skyline of New York City is the city looks great on a Tuesday night and Yankee Stadium is jumping. We head to the ninth inning Yankees leading two to one. And they turn it over to Mariano Rivera. Well you take a look at Mariano's line uh, last night he got an inning in here at the stadium kind of knocking out uh, off the dust uh, so to speak. Uh, he hadn't pitched in quite a few days uh, since those back spasms that he had in Baltimore but 18 strikeouts and 11 saves on the year and he's got a chance to save another one tonight for the Yankees They're trying to win their second in a row. And they got the right man out on the mound to do it. Nixon Baratek. And Lowell. Five, six, and seven. Nixon three for 16 lifetime against Rivera. Popped up shallow left. Coming on is Cabrera. Going out is Cairo. And Cabrera with the call and the catch. One pitch, one out. And Cabrera doing exactly what he should do. It's a much more difficult play for Cairo going back on it than Cabrera coming in. And right at the last minute, you'll see Cabrera call him off of it. And he makes the easy out. Boy, you can just see him maturing uh, yep. just every game in the outfield and off also offensively. The captain. Has a great seat. Not the one that he wants, but a pretty good seat. Pitch to Veritek is a strike. Good numbers against Rivera. Seven for 24. Hit sharply at Andy Phillips. Knocks it down. He'll take it himself. The Yankees are one out away. Tonight after the game, keep it right here on My Nine News for highlights and analysis of tonight's action. The ChevyOffers.com sports wrap-up. Tonight after the game, only on My Nine News. David Pauley pitched well. But he's one out away from suffering a loss. Melky Cabrera, a brilliant play on a Manny Ramirez drive that would have tied the score at two in the eighth. Here's Mike Lowell. Lowell against Rivera. Sox down to their final out. One and oh. 
A sellout crowd of 55,141 at the stadium. Lowell is two for three. And this should do it. Cano to Phillips. And the Yankees win two to one. Melky Cabrera did not pick up a hit today, but he has reason to smile. He made an all-time play on Manny Ramirez's drive in the eighth. And David Pauley can only sit and watch the celebration that could have been his. Well, you talk about feeling comfortable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> say I'll Cabrera. tell you, that, that, this is as good a game between these two teams as we've seen in a long time. I know fans like to see a lot of action, a lot of home runs, but this was a terrific baseball game with great pitching which I don't think anyone anticipated before it started and then the top it off with the unbelievable play by Cabrera. Amazing play for sure Johnny Damon his reaction <laughs> was worth the price of admission when Cabrera caught the ball. Bernie Williams with a big home run. And a pretty good pitching performance by Chin Ming Wong. Now let's throw it down to the field where John Flaherty is with the Yankee catcher Jorge Posada. John. Thank you, Michael. We're here with Jorge Posada. Jorge, great pitching tonight. Wong, Farnsworth, and Rivera. Looked like the Red Sox are making Wong work early, but he settled down in the middle of the game. Yeah, he slowed down a little bit. Uh, he was trying to get through the inning. Uh, I went out there a couple times to so make him make him make sure that he slowed down and throw the pitches down in the zone. You know, anytime there's good pitching, there's usually a great defensive play. Melky Cabrera is making a name for himself out there, isn't he? Yeah, he's having a lot of fun. He's doing a lot of things well. And, you know, at the beginning, we didn't think he was going to do that. But uh, I think he's just, uh, you know, a lot of comfortable out there and he looks good out there. You know every ball you're hitting's on the screws. Two more hits tonight. How's the knee feel? Uh, well <laughs> he's there you know uh, but you know I feel good at the plate and the only bad problem is, is running so. Well get some ice on that knee. Back up to you Michael. Thank you John and thank you Jorge. So the Yankees win an exciting game here at the stadium. Two to one they've taken the first two games of this four game set against the Red Sox and this is one of the big reasons why a brilliant play by Melky Cabrera a 21 year old on Broadway under the big spotlight and he has every reason to smile we'll come on back we'll try to break it down the Yankees win two to one. 各位观众，王建民今年球季的第十四场的出赛，也是第十三场的先发，结果投出了非常完美的一场比赛，尤其是面对的是波士顿红袜队，过去从来没有打败过红袜队的王建民，在他生涯第四度啊先发面对红袜队，而且是在自己的主场 Yankee Stadium 的第一次先发面对红袜，结果投出了非常优异的成绩表现。我们来看一下王建民今天的一个投球的一个记录，总共投七局，只被打八支单打，失掉唯一一分就是 Big p o p p y 所打出来的阳春全垒打。另外，两个保送，两个三振，总用球数是今年球季啊单场最多的一百零九球，七十个球是好球，只有三十九个球是坏球，所以好坏球的比率也是超过了二比一，所以展现非常好的一个控球，自责分率在七局只失一分的情况下，从赛前的四点八二掉到了四点五二，所以啊掉入了。越来越理想的一个状况，所以王建民最近两场比赛的上场都有斩获，前一场是担任救援拿下救援成功，那今天这场比赛上场先发拿下了今年的第六胜。那先来预告一下，王建民下一场的先发将是在台北时间六月十二号礼拜一的清晨，也就是礼拜天的深夜的凌晨一点，又要今年三度第三度啊再战呢运动家队，依旧是在自己的主场。来出战，我们知道他前一场出战运动家队，在自己的主场碰到了同样是赛扬奖的投手啊，呃 ，Barry Zito， 他是投出了非常优异的八局没有失分，最后是二比零打败了运动家队。那场比赛也是今年球季啊，王建民单场上场先发，没有掉任何分数的唯一的一场比赛。那前一场比赛当然，运动家队那场比赛是有三个大棒子都没办法上场，那这次碰到运动家队，这些大棒子恐怕都会回来了。那王建民还是要小心谨慎。那今天的转播工作到这里啊，暂时告一个段落了。谢谢你的收看，我是袁定文，我们下次再会。